Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. It's Silly Saturday and we're painting a rooster. Cock-a-doodle-doo! Um, it's a simple, easy rooster you can do in probably about 15 minutes or so. And it's really just very fast and easy. So um, let's get started. Okay, to start off, we're gonna draw this. Um, you're gonna just do a lightly penciled sketch of like his outline because you're not gonna actually really paint right into it because it's going to be loosely painted. So basically we're doing like a big U here and put another one here. Do like a V almost put the little line here and then the lines, parallel lines down for the little beat. And go like that. Up here we'll put the beak, little eye, little head, the crown and this gobble gobble goo. And then we're going to have just like loose brush strokes for the feathers here and here. You get the idea. But you just put this down on your paper lightly and then we're going to be painting over it. I always use the number two, I mean sorry, yeah, 2H pencil to lightly draw out my silhouettes because um, you don't see it as much and then paint over it. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're going over supplies. I have a piece of uh, 7 by 10 inch paper. I just basically took my um, Arches 100% cotton pad paper that's 10 by 14 and fold it in half um, to get more use out of it. And I have my medium palette with my paints in it. This is a palette, not the medium paints. The palette itself, the holder of it is called medium. The paints are varied. Um, they're Winsor Newton Cotman colors, they're Arch Loft colors, they're Dick Book colors. I just buy a bunch of the colors. I tell you the names of them because they're pretty much the same standard names of the paints in every, you know, paint maker. Um, you just pick out the particular, particular brand that you like. I mix it up a little bit. Some are cheaper than others, some are more expensive than others, some have better colors than others. Obviously the more expensive paints have better quality paint. Um, you'll always find that true. And so, and then I'm using a, uh, my water here. I have two, actually two water jars. I rinse off the first one with the dirty brush and then the second one for the clean water on my paper towel right here and I'm using I'm gonna start with the Grumbacker 10 um, people ask me they didn't see this at Dick Blick I don't know if I got this at Dick Blick I'm actually not sure where I got it this is kind of an older brush and it's it's got a point on it but it's more rounded here whereas uh, some of these other ones these long round brushes a very long point you see the difference bigger belly, less of a point. I work with both of them. Oh, whatever. I like them both. And I mixed up some colors already. I have a medium red here. I mixed up a medium yellow with a little bit of red with some brown here and funky little blue going on here. I don't know. I mix a bunch of blues like indigo with ultramarine. So like I said, you don't have to follow all the colors that I use. Obviously, you know, it's a good tool to watch me and like get inspired and s do similar colors, but you just do your thing. I mean, you can make a pink rooster for all I care. It doesn't matter. It's just as long as you get used to like painting. And I'm just giving you ideas. So I know that roosters are kind of big right now. So I'm going to start getting the red really wet. Got a lot of water on this brush. Fill it up. I was kind of dab my paint on the paper towel first just to see consistency. Okay. And then I'm just going to go in here, paint with a little gobble gobble goo. And this is like a light red. It's going to dry fairly light because this this uh, paper really soaks it up. I'm just going to wash in a little crown. I'm not going to make it perfect because I don't want that look. I don't really care for that. I'm not going for perfection. I'm just going for a look, a style. And I'm going to go around his little eye here the red. Gobbly gobbly goo thing. It's not a turkey, but it, you know, seriously. I'm clean that off. I'm going to wash in this area. This is going to be like brownish, or it could be gray, it could be whatever you want, you know, but basically it's like a yellowish brown. It could be like a burnt umber, fairly light. So with the little uh, arms, I'm just washing. And I'm actually, see that I washed, put that color down, I thought it was a little too concentrated, so I'll take some water that I have. And I'll just go in here and I'll push it around like this. Just pushing it around. I'm trying not to get too close to this red that I just put in, because you can see it's already starting to bleed. But, you know, I'm just going to wash that in. 
And then I'll go grab some deeper like burnt umber and throw some little lines in like this. And a little uh, raw umber, do the same. Do a little red up here too. Just splotch it right in there. You can throw in a little, I'll do like a little black in here. Just pushing it around like so. See, I'm just pushing it. It might just make little blocks. If there's little dots in there, that's fine. Just move it around. Just playing around with it now. I'm going to wash in this color. We're going to go on top of that eventually. Now around here, we're going to wash in some, some blue tones. I have a cobalt here. And by the way, how do I activate some of these? They're all dried. What I do is I actually I have this thing I've had forever. You can get these things kind of everywhere. It's a... Let's see how dirty this is. I feel it's a water squirter, and you just fill it up, and you just squirt little water all on inside your dried wells, and then it will just activate them. So I got some cobalt right here. Go mix it with that crazy blue that I had up here. I get it for like use. I'm just gonna wash in some of this blue in here. Some lines wash in. I'm also going to wash in a little bit of orange here. Like an orange, a little red right in here, or the underwing, whatever you want to call that. Go back in and throw some of this blue. See, it's a mishmash of paints, which is fine. I mean, like I said, Gives it more variety, it does. So it's just fairly wet on wet. If it's still difficult for you to do wet on wet, you just feel like it's too intimidating, just do it more concentrated. Take your time with it. We're all just learning as we go anyway. I mean, even the person who's been doing watercolor for 50 years is still learning, at least I hope so. Otherwise, what's the point, right? See, I'm going to grab some of this brown, smoosh it around around here. Orange. Grab some of this red to make it orange. Just making these little wispy feathers. Clean off my brush, grab that blue. It still keeps mixing with that blue. It's annoying. So I'm going to have to take some of that blue off my palette. I'm going to strip my paper towel and I'll just go in here and just take it off. Like that. Now I'll just grab another paper towel. Like so. <laughs> and replace that. Alright. So now I got the lighter blue going in here. It's okay if you have some white spots underneath here. Some blue back up in here. I'm going to go up and do this crazy little tail feather on top. Just wisp it with your brush. You just shh, shh, like that. Get it very loose. And when you're doing loose lines like this, just kind of like hold your brush up and just kind of use your arm. Don't be so tight down here. Like holding it, you can't do loose strokes with your finger like this. And you're so close to the damn tip of the brush. You gotta be way back here and just go like that. <laughs> Loosen your grip. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I think you get what I mean. I'm adding a little ultramarine in here. It's bleeding because it's pretty wet. That's okay. A little indigo because it's that deep dark blue. I love my indigo, as you know. So many of my tutorials are indigo. Yes, I'm blue biased with indigo. I'm adding it over here. 
See, it's still wet, so it's still just kind of washing in. Obviously, this is going to be more of a layer type of situation, even because it's wet on wet. Go down to the little leglets. <laughs> leglets, that's what I call my kids. Legs and little babies. Little leglets. Those are so cute. Now that's too orangey. I'm going to add a little brown to that. A little while under. See? Now I'm, my finger's closer to the, the brush tip. Because I want to have more con um, control over it. When I want more control, I, I go closer to the tip. When I want less control, I'm going back there. That's a good tip I should be telling people, but sometimes I forget things as I do them. Again, I'm going to go back into this area. It's starting to be a bit dry, as you can see. The, the strokes are bleeding, but not as much. I'm going to add some more orange and red strokes. The blue is still very wet. Here's a little crown gobbly glue. I'm going to add some crimson. That medium red. A little deeper red. Still want it to be more of like a bright orangey red though. So I'll add back in some more of that medium red. Just filling that in. I want it fairly loose, so go like that. The beak, you can make it orange, you can make it dark brown, you can make it black. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Depends on how you want it to look. Still saving that little eye part. I'm going to fill that in. It's black, but I wanted to keep that little highlight, so I kept it white. Going in and grabbing some orange, which I mixed that medium yellow with the red. Get some of these leaves in here. Mm, leaves, excuse me. Feathers. <laughs> I'm so used to painting florals and whatnot that I'm watching the leaves. Excuse me. I'm just going loose, very loose. Go back in with that blue. Wash some of that in. This is the indigo. Still bleeding somewhat. And that's bled too much still too, so I can go back in and add some more concentrated color. See if that bleeds enough. Just keep playing around with this. Wet and wet is, you know, takes time. It's not that easy looking for people who can paint well. Try if I'm painting this flat. If you paint this on an angle, it's kind of interesting how it bleeds down too. You can tape it to a board and do that and let the paint wash down. That'll have a nice dipping effect to it. I'm going to keep this fairly loose. Having fun with it. I'm not going to be serious. What the crap is a blue rooster? I actually have a neighbor that has a rooster. Is it annoying? <laughs> I don't really live in Fine Point View. I live in suburbia. Same thing, I'm just keep adding the color. A little shadow because that's the under leg. It makes the back leg seem darker. Add some of that cobalt. I'm a little brighter, so I'm going to take some of this paint away. As you see, I'm going to add the cobalt back in. To make it a little brighter. Add some in here. This is a fairly easy thing to paint and fun. And if you have a kitchen that has you collect roosters, a lot of people really collect them. This would be a great addition to your kitchen. I'm gonna add some bright yellow in here. Just brighten this up a bit. 
You can go in and get some loose paint on that brush and just tap it in there like that. It'll be even more fun. Have fun with it. Grab the red, do the same thing. I mean, it's very expressive now. It's not just used to saying, hey, just hanging out here. It's used to having fun. Oop. Doesn't matter if I'm not there anymore. You can put a little Payne's Gray, make a little shadow on the bottom here. I'll show you what I mean. A little heat. He doesn't feel like he's standing on air. We don't actually know if it's a he or a she, but whatever it is. And then for the eye, I'll probably go in and grab a smaller brush. I have my little one brush number two. And I'll get some black or paint gray. I'll go in and I'll fill that little eye in and leave that little halo. So this is still what I would go in and add maybe a little detail with the the beak and go around the middle. You can go in here and add some shadow under that gobbly thing. So it has a little bit of like this seriousness, but then the fun with all the splatter. Go back in. Get this in with some darker tone. Use your brush tip and just make these little lines. It's a lot of fun. Add some deeper reds on these feathers under feathers there. Again here. Very simple. It's just really just how long did this take? Not that long, and it's pretty cool, right? I think so. And you just keep, uh, you know, if you think it's okay, I'm just going crazy and adding too much. You can stop. If you don't think you're adding crazy and you want to add more, add more. Play around with it. You could do it monochromatic, but you get the idea. You see? How long did that take? Let's see, folks. Minutes max. Very easy, fun, simple tutorial to do. So I hope you enjoyed this one on my Saturday afternoon. And uh, if you like this, hit the like, share, and subscribe. And thank you so much for stopping by. Have a great day.